If you have made the decision to go ahead, you might ask, where do we start? You should start by reviewing the design documents for the current application. If there are no design documents, then you know why the application is such a mess. Design documents will help you understand the application, and they will help you control the rebuild by tracing from the plans to the build to ensure correctness. At this point, you are ready to do a gap analysis. You may have discovered that essential design documents are missing, and you probably have a list of problems that need to be fixed and features that need to be added. Rebuilding an application has a lot in common with building a new application. I have been studying software methodologies for quite a few years. One conclusion I have reached is that one methodology does not fit all projects. I have seen several organizations that spent huge amounts on methodologies and got very little for their money. This is because the methodologies were not used most of the time. Often, they were not used because they were not appropriate for the work at hand. My full methodology can result in the creation of dozens of documents totaling hundreds of pages. Sometimes that is necessary. As I stated in my 21st Century Software Manifesto, big projects require big methodologies. But many projects will do just fine with a simpler approach. You can Google rapid design and find that practitioners in various fields use this approach. Rapid design reduces the amount of design work in the interest of saving time, but design remains an important part of the process. My rapid design method uses just six documents to capture the most important information about the application. The main goal is to get the structure right. If you do that, then you can tweak the details for a long time. I think that one of the worst things you can do is to gather a group of people in a room to brainstorm about a project. Such meetings often produce an incoherent mass of ideas. This is probably the major cause of paralysis of analysis. Yes, you need to include all the stakeholders in the discussion, but what kind of discussion? Using a document format to guide the discussion will focus the effort and reduce the cost of gathering requirements. The business world is a world of processes, and facilitating those processes is one of the main purposes of IT systems. For many years, business people have been forced to conform to processes dictated by IT systems. Now, we are starting to build IT systems that conform to business processes and the people who execute them. Some organizations have ready-made process maps as a result of ISO 9000 work. You can use those maps as a starting point. If there is no process map, then making a map will help the people better understand what they are doing. This is a document you prepare with the users. The next thing you need to do is to make a list of the people who will use the application and the tasks they need to perform. You can find templates for use cases on the web. To save time, you should adopt a format that gathers the most important requirements. This may mean writing a narrative of the task rather than detailing all the steps. The detail would be done on the next iteration. The list of use cases is also useful for estimating the effort. It takes 40 to 80 hours to implement each use case. This is a document you prepare with the users. Organizations need managers to keep processes moving, and those managers need reports to do their job. Reports give managers feedback on their progress in reaching their objectives. The typical IT group places a very low priority on reporting. You can make powerful friends by asking managers what reports they need. For this document, you work closely with the managers. As you do the business process map, you will also discover the entities involved and the relationships between them. Entities are the people, the physical objects, and the documents involved in the process. 
This is a technical document, not for end users. The ER diagram and the report designs give you most of the information you need to design the back end. You may need a master table for each entity in the system. The ER will help you get the hierarchy between the tables correct. It will also help you specify the one-to-one, -one, one to many and many-to-many -many relationships in the data. This is a technical document, not for end users. With the back end in place, you can begin to design the front end. Usually, there is one screen per master table. The interface structure should follow the flow of the business process as closely as possible. You iterate the screen designs with the users.